Hello, good afternoon, directors. Um, I'm Monique Webster with Government Affairs at SFMTA. Um, and so following on that item on our agency's capital needs, it seems appropriate to be talking about uh, potential uh, efforts underway to fund better transit in the Bay Area. Um, so joining us today is Nick Josefowitz and, um, from SPUR and Kelly Fallon from the Bay Area Council, who are both representing the FASTER Coalition. And they'll first walk through the coalition's overall proposal and process. Um, and a group of transit agencies have been engaged in working with them. So immediately following their presentation, um, I'll, I'll follow with a couple of slides that'll talk about that. And after that, we'll welcome your comments and questions. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nick Josefowitz um, from SPA. Um, when I told my three and a half year old twin boys I was coming to talk to the MTA board, they wanted to say that they really like John, their bus driver, who Aww. picks them up at 8.04 every day um, on the three bus. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then when I knew I was coming before the MTA board, I said a little prayer that I hope um, Director Hemminger treats me better than I treated him um, <laughs> when I, he was in Table this position and I was in that right. one. Um, Payback, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, maybe my prayers are not going to be answered. So um, I wanted to come talk to you about something um, which I think is really exciting, um, uh, like many of the other agenda items you've heard today. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's Faster Bay Area. And Faster Bay Area is... I would say um, both a kind of a concept that we need to transform our regional transit systems if we're going to be able to deliver the mobility and the equity and the affordability and the sustainability that we need across our entire region. But it's also the way that we're operationalizing it in terms of a coalition, a broad coalition that has come together um, to try and make that happen. Um, the coalition is a coalition of business groups like Bay Area Council um, and Silicon Valley Leadership Group of labor, environmental, um, community, um, and, and other stakeholder groups, which is um, continually growing. Um, and I'll tell you a bit today about, um, about where we are um, and would really um, appreciate the kind of the input that you're going to give us because um, this is really about doing something which is um, going to be transformative, but which is going to be um, transformative for all elements, all, all parts of the Bay Area. Um, so, um, oh. uh, is it okay if I don't, if I just click, okay. Okay, great. Um, so, faster, um, Bay Area um, is a vision for a seamless transportation system based on freedom, affordability, speed and safety, transparency, equity, and reliability. And it also has a logo. <laughs> um, the Bay Area today, as you know, is one of the most dynamic economies in the world. Um, however, the region's infrastructure is really based on a pre-1960s model, unable to keep pace with population and economic growth. Um, commute times are increasing, mobility is decreasing, transit ridership is down, um, and 46% of all respondents in a recent poll stated they are considering leaving the region altogether. The last time we made um, a major move at the regional level of the scale that is needed to address our problems was when BART was built um, over 50 years ago, and it's high time that we rise to the challenge and the scale of the problems that we have with a similarly scaled solution. We have a bunch, based on the outreach work that we've done, and we can, we'll talk a little bit about the outreach work later, um, we're, set, we, we're starting to settle on a number of principles um, that would be necessary to transform our regional transportation network. Funding projects that fill in our missing links to create a truly regional transportation system, but also provide, that also provides frequent and reliable service providing freedom of access, mobility, and a true alternative to driving alone. This new system has to be faster than driving alone and more reliable, which basically means it has to be out of traffic, and it has to be frequent. We can't be subject to the tyranny of schedules, where if you happen to miss a train or a bus, it means you're late to pick up your kid or to pick up your mother from a doctor's appointment. We have to solve for some of the existing barriers that we know are barriers to taking transit. That includes affordability with means-based fares and student, and student discounts. 
that's reliability, and that's ability to access the system um, for everybody. Um, universal access, as well as access for cyclists and pedestrians and safety, um, access for low-income communities that are so often um, excluded from um, transit planning. It has to support economic development, um, and transit, transit allows for new areas for affordable housing and business development throughout the now nine counties, and also connects our densest and most transit-oriented communities. It should be seamless, um, integrating fares, sharing stations amongst different operators with timed transfers and schedules, so it doesn't feel like you're having to navigate 29 different systems. We need to center equity um, in our new vision for the future of regional transportation, prioritizing access to vulnerable communities, as well as planning to stabilize those vulnerable communities before we make major transit investments and adopting universal design standards and accessibility standards throughout the system. It needs to be a vision which is regional, which has been lacking, but also community focused with deep community engagement in funding allocation decisions. We need to resource existing, if we're gonna do all this, we need to resource existing transit agencies, not just with funds to build projects, but to operate them, and also to increase their own capacity to deliver transformation at this scale. And of course, it needs to be sustainable. Um, transportation is the fastest um, of growing um, source of emissions in the state of California. Um, we need to have a transit system which is clean, um, which has in the sustainability sense, of course, also in the trash sense, um, and that these investments should be significantly reducing VMT. Um, we wouldn't want to embark on something like this without opinion research. Um, and so here are some of the kind of highlights from that. Um, voters recognize the transportation challenges facing the region, and there is significant interest in a solution of this scale. Voc voters are seeking a modern, reliable, and accessible transit system that connects the whole Bay Area. And there is a conceptual willingness to raise taxes for transportation investments at above the two-thirds threshold level that would be required. We tested a number of different mechanisms, um, revenue mechanisms, and the differences in support between them are slight and within the margin of error. Which leads us to conclude that a major regional measure to, a, to transform our regional transportation system is politically viable in the right environment. But it is um, organized and funded opposition could very well end in defeat. So to be a little bit more specific, um, based on our research, um, the one cent, a one cent sales tax generates substantial funding, has the flexibility to fund operations, is political, politically viable, and is a funding source that has historically generated broad support for transportation investments in the Bay Area at the county level. A one cent sales tax across the nine counties of the Bay Area would generate $100 billion over 40 years in date of expenditure dollars. So what are some of the benefits of this? Um, we could use the proceeds over $100 billion um, and um, in a way that is not restricted like a bond measure would be. Um, and it's a st pretty straightforward tax that voters can understand. Um, the revenue of $100 billion is sufficient to fund a long-term strategic plan for capital improvements and operating budgets that would transform our regional transportation systems. But it is not enough to fund everybody's project. It turns out that $100 billion doesn't actually buy you as much transportation <laughs> investments as you would think it would in the Bay Area. Um, that might be a problem that you have encountered <laughs> elsewhere. Um, and so it's not a question of just building projects. It's really a question, as I was talking about before, before with centering equity and seamlessness and integrating um, transit, disparate transit networks. It's really about building um, a set of projects and also making the policy changes and changing how we plan and operate our entire, uh, our entire regional network um, so that we can actually deliver the mobility that we need. Um, Bay Area employers um, contribute 35% of sales taxes um, at the regional scale, about $550 million annually um, if it was a one cent sales tax. 
Um, and sales taxes are not paid on the three big expenses um, for most families, especially low-income families, housing, healthcare, and groceries. The cons of a sales tax is that they are, it is regressive, um, and um, it may be perceived to compete with local sales tax measures that might be under consideration by various counties and cities. And the regressivity is something that we take incredibly seriously. And so I just wanted to kind of ground it um, in some numbers and tell you a little bit about some of the steps that we're thinking um, and that we've heard we, um, that we should be taking to address the regressivity concerns. So um, the, uh, the cost of a one cent sales tax to the bottom, to low income households, those that are on the bottom quintile of the income scale, um, would be less than $10 a month. Um, which is not insignificant. And so the pro the, the, um, one of the solutions that we're thinking about is putting in place um, a low income sales tax credit, which will be the first time this has been done in California. It's been done in a number of other states in different ways in Hawaii and elsewhere, where low income families would get um, a, 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 tax, a refundable tax credit, credit equivalent to the estimated amount that they would spend um, in additional sales taxes to keep low-income families whole. Personally, I think this is incredibly exciting because um, on average, if you take all sales and excise taxes um, paid by low-income families in California, which includes soda taxes and gas taxes and cigarette taxes as well as sales taxes, um, they pay 8% of their annual income in excise taxes. So if we could deploy, if we could pilot a mechanism here through this measure, which would provide a roadmap to significantly reduce that burden on low-income households, I think that would be a tremendous equity move. We're also, as I, um, as I alluded to early, earlier, very much considering, um, uh, or, or very committed to, I should say, um, uh, rolling out a sort of a deep um, and in perpetuity affordable fares program. Um, Muni has really taken the lead on this in the region um, in terms of your affordable fare program, um, but many other operators, especially long distance regional operators like BART and Caltrain, um, have to, don't have uh, a source of funding um, independent from, from their own budgets, and as a result, have incredibly high fares, which significantly reduce the ability of low income people to take those systems. Um, but if we could put in place through this measure um, a, uh, a significant means-based discount um, for low-income um, families taking regional transit and local transit, um, that would be that would make a huge difference. Um, that could benefit. That could have benefits of up to forty or fifty dollars a month per person um, who takes transit um, during the commute. Um, we're also very much focused on um, and thinking through with the sort of large employers in the region, um, the possibility of uh, a region-wide TDM program. Um, and again, San Francisco um, has done remarkable work in this space, um, which basically requires employers to invest in the commutes of their workers. Um, and could we structure this in a way where employers are prioritizing investing in the commutes of their low-income workers or their moderate wage workers? Um, and that looks like everything from bike share memberships to transit passes um, to incentives to van pool or carpool, things that, and obviously in different contexts, it would look very different. A vineyard in Napa is gonna sort of be deploying different types of solutions um, than sales forces, um, but um, sort of deploying a, re a region-wide program, um, I think is also something that could really help um, drive people onto transit, provide the right incentives for people to make the right decisions in their commute, um, and also um, is, is a way for larger employers to contribute even more to kind of solving our regional um, transportation problems. We're also trying to get at the regressivity of the sales tax um, through the expenditure plan, um, aside from the affordable fares. Um, and we're very committed, um, based on the, 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 um, the outreach that we've been doing, for this to be a transit measure. Um, and as you all know, um, low-income communities dis are, are, are disproportionate users of transit. Um, that, that having a transit measure is not unusual in San Francisco, but it would be pretty revolutionary um, at the regional scale, especially um, considering the types of sales tax measures that you see going on the ballot in other counties. Um, we are very committed to prioritizing access for communities of concern um, in, 
in how we develop this measure, as well as protections for vulnerable residents. And we're very committed um, to having a, um, a very inclusive decision-making process in how the funding is distributed, um, which includes sort of vulnerable communities and communities who've been traditionally disenfranchised from the process. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Kelly Fallon to walk you through the rest of the slides, and then um, after it's all over, I'm sure we'll have some questions. Hi, good afternoon, directors. My name is Kelly Fallon. I'm a policy manager at the Bay Area Council, and I'm going to quickly go through the process and where we are to date. Um, so you'll see here, right now, we're in the process of developing this framework for this expenditure plan. And we're doing that by taking all the feedback from the outreach we've been doing that Nick mentioned with labor and equity um, groups, with operators, with the county transportation agencies, um, with business leaders. So we're taking all this feedback and we're using that to develop a, um, a draft framework for the types of projects that could be funded through this measure. And so the, our thought is that at the end of October, we currently have um, scheduled a presentation to the MTC Commission and we'll be getting feedback along the way. Um, hopefully then in, at the end of this year, we will have a final framework to present and put into the legislative language to go through the state legislature. So that would be going through the process in January, from between January uh, to June, and it would require two thirds votes of the legislature because there'd be an urgency clause that'd be required. So if we make it through that hurdle, um, hopefully we would then um, be able to go to MCC and they would have the authority to place it on the ballot in late spring or summer. And so this is the quick summary of the feedback that we've gotten from the outreach um, that we've done to date. Um, so everyone wants us to focus on transit. They want major investments that will transform the system and not just a bunch of um, you know, priority projects uh, from all over the place. They really want something that's gonna be transformative. They want us to integrate regional rail into a system that's seamless. They want regional express bus lanes uh, running on fast express lanes. So we've heard a lot from our research or from our outreach that people want express buses but also need the dedicated lanes so that they can get out of traffic. Um, we've, like we mentioned already a lot, we um, are hearing a lot of support for discounted fares for low income riders, including students um, and seniors really want a great walk and bicycle access, so those kind of last mile um, considerations so that there's good access to transit. And having, um, making sure that we have a flexible system so that we can think about um, using new technologies to also help with those last mile connections. And then of course, you know, they want us to improve existing transit systems, make them faster, reliable, and more frequent. So my last slide here is just um, a quick overview of where we are now. So as we mentioned already, we are focused on a one cent sales tax for November 2020. We are exploring the ways that we can address the regressive, um, regressivity of the sales tax through you know, low income rebate, affordable fares, or a means based fares program. Um, and we're now working with all the transit agencies and county transportation agencies to identify some shovel ready projects that we could specifically you know, identify through the expenditure plan, but we are focused more on a bucket, you know, on having essentially a mix of projects and buckets where we, we don't want to be too prescriptive with the um, funding, the expenditure plan. We want to make sure that we have buckets that, with really good, well laid out criteria for future um, planning, but also some um, near term projects that could be funded through the measure. Uh, so that's, that's the, the wrap up. You know, we are doing, um, this is part of our outreach we are also doing, uh, working with a lot of the county transportation agencies to do public outreach in each of the nine counties um, in this fall time. And so we have one uh, already scheduled in Alameda on October 3rd. And we also have a survey that should be coming out next week that will be even uh, another way to engage the public to get their ideas on the types of you know, transit projects and programs that they want to see in their communities. So now I believe I'll be turning it back over to Monique. Um, so thank you. All right, so some months ago, the Faster Coalition approached the Bay Area Transit Agency General Managers with this opportunity, um, and we formed a group of about 10 agencies. That, um, and uh, so we formed a group of about 10 agencies and began a, began a dialogue around this. So the Transit Agency Group uh, developed a draft vision statement as well as a set of five guiding principles with connectivity, reliability, and equity as key elements. And hearing from the proponents the desire for transformational projects, we established these buckets as a guide. 
um, in thinking about this potential funding source. So the largest bucket is for transformational projects um, that would include operating funds for new projects. Uh, we also included a modernization bucket at about 15% to make sure we're accounting for keeping the current system in a state of good repair. And two smaller categories uh, to enhance the services that we currently have and also to advance equity, resiliency, and safety. So here's what the 10 transit agencies have been thinking about as a framework. Um, the first key theme is trying to get transit away from getting stuck in traffic by making investments in the regional rail system, an express network for bus and more ferry service, and for transit in urban areas like, um, like ours that carry a lot of people. And the second theme that we're trying the second theme is trying to better connect corridors and cores region-wide. Um, next is integration, which is another area that we've been focused on uh, with three sub-areas, gap closures in the regional network to better facilitate connections, hubs and stations um, where the connections between systems are made, for example, the downtown extension into Salesforce Center. And the last one is fare integration, which is an effort currently getting underway um, between MTC and the region's transit operators. So the last thing to highlight is continued operations um, and um, continuing funding to keep our um, systems in a state of good repair moving forward. So while this is still uh, very much in a formative stage, um, what I'll end on is some of the projects that we're thinking about as part of this improved network. Um, under the transformational category, those include upgrading the train control system and continued implementation of the Muni Forward program to improve travel times and reliability. Uh, also, the next generation of high capacity rail investments in the city, and those will be informed by the work that's currently underway under the Connect SF program. Under the modernization category, we've included upgrading maintenance and storage facilities, as well as converting all transit vehicles in the region to zero emissions. And in the enhanced category of regional express bus network, as mentioned before, um, including express lanes on highways 101 and 280 in San Francisco, um, operating in state of good repair funding, and again, support for regional fare integration. And then in the final category, a few things to highlight, um, making investments to improved accessibility as the population ages, we feel is important, and addressing the climate adaptation challenges the transit systems are facing. So with that, that's the end of the presentation, and we welcome your comments and questions. Great. Thank you. Director, do you want to ask some questions now, or do you want to open up to the public first? Okay, great. Open up for public comment. Rowan Katow, followed by Bob Allen and Edward Mason, the first three speakers. Uh, good afternoon, Board of Directors. Um, I'm here to speak on behalf of Adina Levin from Voices for Public Transportation, who is at a high-speed rail board meeting today, and she can't be in two places at once. Um, she writes, uh, Voices for Public Transportation is a community of group, uh, a group of community labor and environmental and transportation advocates who have been working over the last 18 months on a vision and principles, which we've shared with this board, for a regional transportation measure. Our approach is to lead with our vision and principles, focus on the outcomes we want for the Bay Area transit riders, and develop a measure that we can win at the ballot. We have several concerns about the approach of FASTER in their uh, presentation today, at least as it was submitted in the slide deck. Uh, some details that were said today were uh, missing from that. Um, the, uh, she emphasizes that the groups behind this proposal are uh, not public agencies. They are the Bay Area Council, uh, Silicon Valley Leadership Group, and SPUR, uh, so business groups, not public agencies. Um, the, uh, we have concerns about the regressivity of the one cent sales tax. It's good to hear uh, some of that being addressed, um, but it would be really great to um, explore other uh, taxation measures as well, especially if the polling showed the difference was slight. It, it seems good to uh, explore those other ones too, and we haven't heard what they are. They just said they explored a bunch of things and presented this one. Um, and then finally, a process in which uh, the FASTER Coalition is going directly to public agencies um, and not doing as much public involvement risks um, having the measure uh, not passed before it even gets to the ballot. Uh, and that's all I have from uh, Adina. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker. Bob Allen, Edward Mason, Peter Strauss. And Mr. St 
Hi, good afternoon. Bob Allen with Urban Habitat. I'm, I'm sure that Board Member Hemmiger is really disappointed he's missing out on this one at MTC. He's going to only get part of the fun. Um, the comments from Adina were part of the Voices for Public Transportation. The group's been meeting for about a year and a half. Hopefully you received the copies of our vision and principles. Those were endorsed this summer by the San Francisco Central Labor Council and they're currently before the boards of a couple of the other uh, regional labor councils. And we're happy to hear that some of the things are, are uh, the ideas and that vision and principles are things that you would find in, in what the folks from FASTER are present today. We've been in conversations with them. We uh, do agree that any kind of regional uh, transportation measure is going to take everyone getting on board, which is why I have to say I'm a little bit concerned about the, the process, more than a little bit concerned about the process. And we've been having these conversations with stakeholders. So um, several things. One, I think uh, often with so many of these processes, we're concerned about re regressivity and instead of looking at potentially progressive revenue sources, there's no real conversation on why uh, and the polling data, there's some interesting things that were included, some things that I think weren't included. There's no real conversation about other potential revenue sources. We've gotten uh, resources to work with the Silicon Valley Community Foundation and uh, some consultants to look at other potential revenue sources and we think that should be part of the conversation that it shouldn't just be a conversation we go immediately to the sales tax, which we've heard at Sam Trans and several of the transit agencies, the board members expressing concern about as local officials losing their ability to raise sales tax revenue with a new threshold with this proposed measure. And I think if we want to pass something, which we all want to do, we need to start with looking at the revenue mechanism and jumping past it. And finally, it's news, I think, to a lot of the riders of your system that there's a process going on that they don't know about and they're not part of. And I don't know if members of the board have been part of the process that FASTER's laid out as well. So hopefully you'll address that today. Thank you. Edward Mason, Peter Strauss, last person to turn in a speaker card, Michael Borden. Thank you very much, Edward Mason. Uh, will the FASTER Bay Area remove the 200 plus private one seat commuter buses operating on 24th Street as authorized by this board? A Caltrain expansion presentation at the County Transportation Authority indicated major peninsula employers desire to eliminate commuter buses. But this collides with the SF Champ model that was done for the hub study, indicating that 45% would drive if they had to travel to a hub. About 730 buses operate and transport about 8,000 employees in San Francisco demonstrating an exclusive captive company ridership, preventing recruiting and uh, competitors uh, poaching their employees. Supporters, um, uh, the Silicon Valley Leadership Group supported the Santa Clara County Light Rail system, which has the worst performing system almost in the, in the nation. And then replacing the 50 car fleet midlife with a 100 car fleet that is now 40 cars are in the, for morning pullout are sitting in the yard. Uh, they now support the private commuter buses utilizing the light rail parking in Santa Clara County. Greyhound was the regional express bus system 50 years ago, which I used. Uh, the question is, where was MTC during the intervening years? And another sales tax, when the employers rely on the infrastructure, I think that they ought to pay five-sevenths of the cost to establish and operate, since if they didn't have the infrastructure, they wouldn't be able to carry on their business. So th that's a direct connection with that. So you're, they always come back to the private person to say, well, the roads are bad, don't you want to improve it? Yeah, but if you didn't have the infrastructure in place, these companies wouldn't be able to function. Thank you. Peter Strauss, followed by Michael Borden, and then Thea Selby. Thank you. Good afternoon, <clears throat> afternoon, Board. Peter Strauss on the board of the San Francisco Transit Riders. Uh, several of us have been working on this for several years uh, now, as well as some of the faster folks. Um, and uh, we're come together now as the Voices for Public Transportation, which is an, a coalition of transportation, housing, uh, labor, uh, health care, um, and social justice folks 
Uh, about 20 folks have signed on to that uh, voices the uh, vision and principle statement that we sent to you. Uh, I'd like to note that uh, FASTER at this point is an organization. Voices is an organization. Uh, we don't know yet what this measure that comes, uh, we hope will be on the ballot when 2020 will be. Uh, we hope it will not be, it's not the FASTER measure as it's presented right now, but we do realize that everyone needs to come together on a single measure. Uh, this is going to get anywhere. I'd like to pick up on the word transformational, <clears throat> which was used in the fa FASTER presentation. We agree it needs to be transformational, but not just in terms of some of the things that we build. We feel it very much needs to be transformational in terms of the revenue sources. We want a measure that will win. Uh, we don't believe a 1% sales tax ultimately will win if it can even get through the legislature. There's been a lot of criticism of that, including by legislators, uh, and we think the approach should be more what Seattle did, where they uh, um, ended up putting three revenue sources not a single one onto their, uh, their measure. Uh, we also feel very strongly that the operation support is critical and we need to be transformational in terms of the resources that we provide for this. Uh, Seattle and LA and their measures each put between 20 and 25 percent of the total resources into operations, not just of the new toys that get built, but also the existing services like those that have been critically cut. So we think it's important that the percentages be higher than what uh, is currently in the FASTA proposal. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Michael Borden, followed by Thea Selby, and those are the last two people. All right. <laughs> no, no worries. Thea Selby, last speaker. Thank you very much. I actually had to go up forward, so I appreciate your senior moment. Thank you. Uh, my name is Thea Selby, and I'm the chair of the San Francisco Transit Riders, and I'm very happy to be here today, and I want to thank you all, especially, I believe you're the president now, is that, or I'm vice president, chair. vice, <laughs> vice chair, uh, Gwyneth Borden, for being at our Transit Week last week, um, which I think was a huge success and got a lot of supervisors to take public transit, and the, the mayor as well. She was on there all, all, all week, I understand. So a lot of what, um, I'm part of Voices for Public Transportation. I was one of the people who helped Help to start this movement looking at um, Seattle and Los Angeles. Uh, I have a strong connection to Move LA down in Los Angeles. We actually spoke to Mr. Heminger some time ago, Heminger some time ago, when he was with the MTC. And I just want to point out one thing because I think a lot has been said already. Um, we were down in San Jose and um, there are two, speaking of voices, there are two different kinds of voices. There's the voice of the transit agency and I'm not, I, I, I want SFMTA to not be like this. So there's a the voice of the, of the public transit agency down in San Jose, and they very much are interested in making sure that BART gets built. And then there's the voice of the rider. And we spoke with the riders, um, they're called the Silicon Valley Transit users down there, and they are very interested in more service on their buses. And I want to point that out, that there are sort of two different kinds of voices here, and we want to make sure that the rider, uh, we are very rider-centric, the San Francisco riders, uh, that's, that's what we are, we're transit riders, and we want to make sure that the voices, the different voices, the youth and senior, the disabled, the faith-based, the, and certainly the environmental, um, that they all get heard. Um, and so we believe that our values-based uh, way of working on this, and hopefully you've all read the principles and the, and the vision and the principles, will lead to the best outcomes, which will then make this a winnable measure, which is, of course, all of our hopes at the end. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Madam Chair, that's the last person to turn in a speaker card on this topic. Great. No other, okay, well, public comment is closed. Uh, directors, do you have any input that you would like to provide about? Faster. <laughs> go ahead, Director Heminger. You can go first. I'm still. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> so I had two subjects I wanted to raise. Uh, the first one I, I don't think will be a surprise uh, to Nick, and that's housing. Um, and uh, since you are an MTC commissioner, I think you're you're certainly aware that the legislature, if the governor signs the bill, uh, just gave MTC and ABAG authority to put housing measures on a regional ballot at some point in the future. And I do wonder how that initiative and this initiative will play off each other and whether or not they could possibly come together. Um, 
I think as subject matter, they belong together. Uh, as a political matter, uh, that may be somewhat of a challenge uh, because we're asking people to bite off two big subjects at once instead of one. But whoever goes first sort of puts the other in a secondary position if they don't go together. And I worry about that because housing tends to be the, the one left at the altar every time. So that's one subject. Uh, the second one, like Peter, I wanted to talk about transformation. Um, and you know, the, the project that I've heard most associated with this initiative is the notion of a new Transbay tube uh, between the West and East Bay. And that would clearly transform things in lots of different ways. Um, but how many people would actually ride it will depend a lot upon the, in my opinion, the demand side of the equation. What I've heard talked about here is a lot of new supply. Um, and we need new supply. But unless demand is working in tandem with that new supply, we could have some empty supply running around. Mm -hmm. uh, and just as an example, uh, the, the idea that many agencies in our region and elsewhere have been working on is introducing price into the highway network as a way of encouraging travel through other modes. Uh, the fact that you've got an employer-led coalition, I mean, if all those employers charge their employees to park, um, we, we'd have a pretty big demand difference, too. So I wonder how your, your group is going to be looking at the demand side of the equation, if at all, because that doesn't tend to get you a whole lot of votes at the ballot box. Uh, but it's really going to make these investments a lot more meaningful uh, if we could pull off a demand and a supply transformation at the same time. Um, unsurprisingly, great questions. Um, so, um, so thank you, um, Director, for, um, for kind of starting the CASA process that led to um, AB 1487 and Harbor, BAFA, BAFA, BAFA whatever we're going to call it, um, which is now um, the authority that has the, um, the right to put a, a, a potentially $40 billion housing, affordable housing measure on the ballot in 2020 at the regional scale, which is incredibly exciting. Um, and we've, you know, been what, sort of coordinating and, and talking regularly with um, the, uh, the proponents of that measure um, and the affordable housing um, and equity community that is really sort of driving that, um, as well as the business community that's driving that measure as well. Um, it's a sort of a big coalition. Um, and there's a lot of learnings that we have from that. Um, and I think we also sort of have spoken about um, how these housing and transportation are two sides of the same coin um, and that you can kind of sum it up um, if you were to do it together with like live here and get to work is what we're trying to do. Um, and, um, and so I think that there is a sort of a, you know, we're on slightly different timescales. They've passed out of the legislature. We have a, a bill in the legislature, um, which is a spot bill, which is going to start moving in January, which Senator Bell um, from San Jose, who's the chair of the Senate Transportation Committee, um, is, uh, is authoring. Um, and, uh, and so I think that we're going to stay in sort of close discussions with them and with Assemblymember Chu's office, who uh, was the author of AV 1487, um, to see whether down the road it makes sense to kind of put these two things together. Um, and certainly, I think even if they don't go together um, formally on the ballot, I think it makes a lot of sense, as I think a lot of we've heard a lot of, and um, to, to sort of have the policies kind of work together. So they're both getting at the same sort of, um, they're, both, they're both trying to kind of envision a, a future for the Bay Area that is aligned. Just to follow up on that, Nick, can you imagine a scenario where, you know, you're, you're trying to get a bill passed in a very compressed period of time, mm -hmm. and you're buying a two-thirds vote because of it. Mm -hmm. um, would there be a way for the housing measure to go first in 2020 and then the transportation measure to follow after? You know, we're really focused on the November 2020 ballot. It seems like the political kind of alignment of are, yeah. is, uh, is ripe for that. Yeah. Um, but we also don't feel that um, if we don't do it in 2020, it's not worth doing. Um, we're pretty sure that in 2022, we're still going to have the same problems that we have today if we haven't made these kind of substantial changes and transformations. So, um, you know, I, I can't stand up here and say we don't have a backup plan, um, but we are you know, we, we think there's a real momentum behind what we're doing and, um, and, and there's a momentum to try and get on the 2020 ballot. 
Um, and then um, to address your second point on the on the demand side, um, I, I, you know we've we've spoken about this before, and I think this is um, it's 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 very true. And so you know the the work that's been done at MTC and elsewhere on starting to build out the express lane network. Um, is something that we've heard from a lot of people should be completed as part of this measure. Um, and that having a sort of a, a regional, ex a gapless regional express lane network, um, which operates seamlessly, um, so we don't have, you know, nine different counties and a bunch of JPAs operating their own express lane networks with their own rules and their own sort of everything, but having a complete gapless express lane network, um, which forms the basis for a, um, a, a sort of a, um, a, a sort of a truly seamlessly run um, ex express bus network around the region, um, which integrates seamlessly with a sort of an upgraded rail regional rail network, um, which um, which also operates seamlessly, um, could be the sort of a sort of one of the foundations, and those express lanes could be one of the drivers, one of the demand sort of producers. Um, we're also thinking that on the for um, one of the ideas that we're exploring um, with, with our business partners and others um, of um, looking at a kind of the regional scale TDM program. That's, that's something that um, the last time this was tried was in the early 90s um, coming out of some a Federal Clean Air Act um, and, uh, and then sort of implemented by the Bay Area Quality Management District and others. Um, but at the time, it wasn't really possible to do it um, the, it, the time wasn't right, basically, and it wasn't possible to do it in a way which was flexible and easy to administer. Um, and so there was a revolt in the legislature. And in 1996, the legislature st stopped sort of region-scale TDM programs like the one we're considering. Um, but we think that the combination of major investments in transit, um, which kind of provide an alternative to a lot of employees for driving alone, um, will be sort of what's necessary to get employers to the table um, to provide their own incentives um, for people to, to, to get out of their cars driving alone. Um, and I think some of that will lead to um, more people taking transit, um, especially if it's, you know, if, 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 um, if it can get them to work. Um, and a lot of it will probably end up in carpooling and van pooling as well, which is also a really good thing. Um, at the regional scale, there are as many people who carpool to work as take transit, just to kind of put that in context. But I think we've got more work to do there. But, um, but this would be, I think, a transformational start to put something like this regional TDM program in place if, 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 um, if, it, if it makes its way. Other directors? Thank you. Thank you, all of you, for the presentation. It's, it's fascinating. I, my first thought is I wish we had done this five years ago, ten years ago. I wish we were already well on our way to these solutions that are outlined here. Um, at first, I wanted to say I'm, I'm a little bit agnostic on how we get to that funding. I do understand the regressive nature of the sales tax. I think that the um, low income sales tax credit could really help address that because it is, it's a serious issue. Um, do you know, just off the top of your head, really, really briefly, Los Angeles was sales tax based, correct? Yeah, they had a one cent sales tax. And Seattle's? Uh, S Seattle was uh, a combination of different measures, including, um, if I'm not mistaken, and and um, off the top of my head, I'm probably also having a senior moment. It was a sales, uh, a sales, um, a vehicle license fee, um, uh, and Peter, parcel tax and sales tax. Okay, right. That one was a combination <laughs> funding yeah. measure. Um, and I and just to put, and you know, we're, um, we we, we're yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm just, and I, I'm saying I. I feel like I don't have the knowledge to say what, where the funding source should come from. Uh, others probably have better knowledge than that, just to say that we need this so badly that I'm at the point where I will, I will support it. I will support it almost wherever the funding comes from. I would love it to be as progressive as possible, but I think the idea that we can, can make this transformative for the region really will speak to people. I mean, people are tired of sitting in traffic. Putting on my um, Caltrain board member hat, 
we are topped out on passengers because we're overcrowded. We can't take more cars off the freeway because mm -hmm. we can't fit them on our trains right now. So we need these type of projects to continue to, to switch people from cars onto this. So um, I understand there are serious reservations, but boy, we have to try. I mean, we've got to, we've got to do something. Otherwise, we're going to be drowning in the same traffic and the same pollution that we've got right now. So thank you for support on this. I mean, for your work on this, you can count on my personal support and hopefully we'll be able to get the region on board and get something passed because we need to. Thank you, Director. Director Eakin. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I was actually a little surprised when I read the briefing materials last night that this was going to all happen so quickly, and mm -hmm. it's ambitious, and it's clearly a, 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 a smart moment to go. Mm -hmm. um, I am a little bit concerned that some of the folks who have spoken up today mm -hmm. should be your natural allies. They mm -hmm. should be right there with you holding hands in this coalition, mm -hmm. and they're not there yet. Mm -hmm. And there's always a tension when you want to go fast and you want to mm -hmm. be inclusive, mm -hmm. always. But I would just encourage you to really double down in your efforts to be inclusive of equity, environmental, health, social mm -hmm. justice organizations, because to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest, you're going to need them to get through the legislature, and you're going to mm -hmm. need them for this measure to pass. So yep. I know you and your colleagues have initiated some yep. of the outreach. You've reached out to my organization. Yep. Uh, but I just uh, it, it seems to me very clear that there's more work to be done to, mm -hmm. to build a broader winning coalition. I think that's absolutely true, and you know we appreciate all the work that um, the that voices have done, um, and I think we are sort of working our way together. Um, and I don't want to speak for them. Um, hopefully, they feel that we're also working our way together. I th and I think we, um, uh, you know, have have enormous amount of respect for the coalition that they've put together and the work that they've done. Um, and uh, you know, I think this is this is part of the process. And and. Um, you know, and this it, it, this looks a little bit more like a kind of a um, the the type of outreach process that a, um, a state legislative bill goes through, um, rather than a sort of a county sales tax. And I think that's one of the challenges because at the start it is a legislative bill um, that has to go through the state legislature, and then um, there's going to be sort of you know if this passed, there would be sort of a whole another level of outreach um, and kind of community engagement that would happen before there was an expenditure plan, and then and then on and on. And so I think we're just trying to there's, there's some tensions which I think are inherent to this and we're trying to, you know, work our way through them and really appreciate kind of, you know, everybody's availability to kind of, you know, work with us and try and get through it. Director Rupke? Yeah, I'll just uh, kind of add on to that. But I think it's really important at this early stage, understanding that you need to get to the legislature first um, to engage with the disability community in particular. You said a lot of really good things. All the, the presentation addressed universal design principles and all that stuff. Um, and I'm sure that some of the coalitions that exist of community organizations include people with disabilities. But um, specifically, I just, I mean, in the, cer certainly in San Francisco, Senior and Disability Action is a key organization, mm -hmm. but also more um, kind of regionally and nationally, um, Disability Rights Education and Defense Fund, they have transportation expertise and policy expertise that would be really, um, you know, very relevant to the discussion here. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's crucial that they're at the table early um, because, you know, people with disabilities and seniors are so transit dependent compared to the rest of the population. Mm -hmm. um, they're often, you know, obviously they overlap heavily with um, low income populations as well. Um, and what we're seeing in our transportation networks, especially mm -hmm. with shared mobility um, and technology, is that mm -hmm. those populations are being absolutely left behind. Our, you mm -hmm. know, our bike share program does not address people with disabilities. Um, mm -hmm. So these, um, it needs to be picked up in this type of transformative mm -hmm. thinking. So engage with those folks often. A, very, a point very well taken, and I've had the, the, the pleasure of working with some of those folks with my other hats on at, as a bar, former bar director and others, and it, it's a point very well taken, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I've just closed out the comments by saying, please do work more with Voices for uh, Public trans, trans Transportation. I think we need to have allies and come together and make sure that we're mm -hmm. building a plan for the future. I also do think we can't underscore enough the issues around housing and the transit connections and the trade-offs. If we're going to make investments in major rail infrastructure specifically, mm -hmm. then those communities have to build the necessary housing um, so that we can so that, that it works. Right? We don't want to yeah. build investments for rail that goes out to the middle of nowhere where nobody actually lives just because people say they want rail. So um, you you know those fights from Bart, <laughs> but my point is just that I think that that is the key thing. You you saw in our cap. You might have seen yeah. that our capital plan. We had thirty billion plus dollars that yeah. we could easily take from this pot if we were able to. Um, yeah. So it just, you know, we are making the commitments here in San Francisco and I want to make sure that we don't also get 
you know, other jurisdictions don't always make the necessary commitments that they need um, and making sure that everyone's held equally accountable. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's that's something we're very, very conscious of as well as how can we um, how can we use this um, this this measure to kind of, you know, um, sort of help support communities that are creating kind of equitable sort of vibrant communities around major transit stops, which is exactly what we should be doing um, in the region and not all communities are. And um, and, you know, this is certainly, a, you know, if we can use this as a big incentive pot to help with that. Um, and it's something we're really conscious of. And I think also there's there's a lot of kind of complementary policies which are kind of being worked on at MTC and elsewhere in terms of sort of revamping the region's transit-oriented development policy, um, which um, which is kind of a process which is ongoing, which I know at MTC, which I know we'd appreciate your kind of um, engagement in, um, especially Director Hemming. Uh, but um, um, but uh, yeah, I think that's absolutely spot on. Great. Any other final comments? And I just wanted to sort of thank um, the MTA staff for their engagement in the coalition as well. I think, you know, um, again, we're trying to create as broad a coalition as possible. I think there's an enormous amount um, with sort of a, a sort of a transformational potential for lots of different um, lots of different agencies. And so thank you very much for your for your deep engagement, Director McGuire. Great. Well, thank you with that. That thank closes you. this item and we'll move on to our next.